Hi everyone, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. Uh, I have with me an, ins an inspiring uh, musician from Massachusetts. I've got Michael Maloney with us, who recently put out a CD, January Hopeful. It's really good, I've been enjoying it. Uh, so uh, welcome, Michael, to the vlog. Thanks, Jason, for having me. Uh, got a question for you. Where did you get the Jan what, what's January hopeful? What's the uh, like where did you get that title for the CD? Because I, I noticed there's no um, January hopeful song on here. So for all I know, you're pulling a Nesmith on me and doing something that, that is completely different than what's on there. <laughs> <laughs> sure, cool. Um, yeah, it's been a term that's um, stuck with me for a few years, uh, even before I started recording this album. Um, it, there was a teacher that I had at UMass Boston um, in the health department. Um, and I just remember one day I went to her, uh, she had a presentation in front of uh, kind of the whole campus. Uh, she did a lot of uh, cardiovascular uh, research and she was discussing the people who for, you know, New Year's resolutions uh, when they go to the gym uh, to try to better themselves. Uh, that there's this term called like the January hopefuls Kind of the, that kind of crowd of people um that always kind of stuck with me i think especially uh because my birthday is in january hmm. and um i find I, I tend to be a little more on the optimistic side um in life and in general my my songs and music i think kind of represent that and uh when it when it came to uh formulating uh this album um it, it's really like a, a collection of different memories of over the years. Um, I didn't write them all with the intention of making an album. It was more, I tried to re-record some old songs of mine um, and then also some newer songs and just realized that, you know, I, I can't cut out any one song um, that I, I wanted to put them in chronological order in which I wrote them um, approximately ages like six, I was about like 16 or 17 uh, when I wrote the first song. And then the last song, I would have been about 26 or so. You were 16 um, so, when you wrote Just Like That. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's actually one of my favorites on the disc too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. So you've been um, doing all this, like what instruments do you play? Yeah, um, I mean, really, I primarily call myself a pianist. Um, I studied piano for about 10 years, um, but I, I'm a rhythm guitarist, if anything. Um, I'm really big into acoustic guitar, um, but I've like dabbled on the ukulele, um, the harmonica, very simple, simple stuff. Um, I thought I heard ukulele in one of the, one of the tracks. Yeah, uh, I, I know how to play four or five chords on the ukulele, uh, that, that song in particular. Um, uh, Taller was the first song I wrote on the ukulele, kind of a, an experiment to write a song with a few chords that I knew. Um, there's a there's a melodica on there, uh, which is a really beautiful instrument. It's like a reed instrument, but it, it's a keyboard, so it sounds like an accordion uh, if you play it the right way. Um, and then just a lot of like tambourine and egg shaker. Big fan of the tambourine. I think it can totally make a song a hundred times better if you don't have some kind of percussion like i'm i'm lucky i can play the maracas <laughs> very nice <laughs> oh, cool. my official monkey's maracas i got somewhere uh <laughs> yeah, see uh to just give people a background uh i was uh dealing with uh my shoulder i've uh, uh i caused uh, issues with it in my short few years as a pro wrestler so uh the hastened uh, arthritis and bursitis in uh, both uh, my shoulders. So I ended up going for physical therapy and that's where Michael and I uh, met because I walked in my first day with, a, with one, of my, one of my monkey shirts. Anybody who knows me, I'm a huge fan, seeing them 18 uh -huh. times in concert. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, he saw that, he's a fan. So uh, we just got it started talking and 
uh, at the physical therapy. So is is that something that you're looking to keep doing while you're making music or are you hoping that uh, one day you'll be touring the country? Uh, oh, I really love, I love physical therapy. Um, I, I really love um, being able to make a change um, sometimes immediately or, or gradually. Uh, and it's very rewarding. Um, uh, it's really lovely. Uh, I love like problem solving. So someone comes in and, and I might not even know what's going on, but I'm going to rack my brain and figure out what, what do I do now and what should I test? And I really love figuring things out and then how to solve it. Um, and that's really satisfying for me, but also just to be with people um, is a highlight. Um, and I have always done music uh, since I was a kid. Um, and I'm always going to be writing songs. It's just a, a huge, uh, not really a hobby, uh, but maybe a little bit more than a hobby. Passion. Uh, yeah, a really, really strong passion. So uh, it's really, um, I've done a lot of music for other people. I've done, um, I'm in an Irish cover band. Uh, we do kind of old traditional songs or I've done some work for churches or um, music theater. And um, with this project, it was important for me to really kind of make a time for myself and my own songs that I've had almost backed up over the years. And to, um, well, well, the goal was to get back to doing uh, open mics and um, coffee houses um, and trying to, you know, have something to share um, live and then something that someone can walk away with tangibly. Um, and uh, well, that was a goal. I mean, I know the last year kind of got thrown off in that a, regard. Do you have a favorite I, track on here? Um, that's a hard, that's. I know it's like asking a mother to pick their favorite child, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, they're all kind of like my children in a way. Um, there's a, there are a few that come to mind uh, for like different reasons. Um, you know, um, like when I still had the chance, uh, the second track was important for me because um, I, uh, when I wrote that also in high school, um, like right after I got really big into Johnny Cash um, and like John Denver and some country stuff that my dad liked. And I intentionally wanted to write a song that my dad would like. And it turned out that he really liked it. And that, that as, a, as a kid, uh, that's very satisfying mm. to know that, like, hey, my dad really liked this thing that I made. And it was, or, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, no, um, or, you know, after, after a while, like, um, my friends started singing Taller a lot to me, or um, or Back to Boston, and um, when, um, when things like that, when you're, like, out doing something completely unrelated, and then all of a sudden, you're walking down the street, and you, your friends start like just randomly chanting the chorus of something that you wrote um, is really special. And that, that happened a lot for like Back to Boston or, or Taller in particular. So those are kind of fun. As like. going through uh, this, the first few times I was no, I definitely could feel a John Denver uh, flow to some of the songs. Uh, oh. I even felt some like latter, uh, like probably like uh, 2000s on Elton John. Uh, that's which, awesome yeah uh, yeah thanks. i mean it's definitely no insult that's it to... there uh, those are some of my icons um i mean I, I i definitely like the beatles and uh, especially paul mccartney are definitely kind of my number one but um i really got into a lot of it's really funny like like definitely i love um you know like elton john's um you know it is like self-titled album or goodbye Ye uh, yellow brick road or uh, like the captain and the kid, I really got into those the more recent records, like you were saying. Um, I think that's really interesting that, uh, that you might have picked up on that. Uh, but it wasn't the intention. But um, you know, artists like him or or John Denver, who, who my dad had introduced me to, um, and just like the beauty of his energy and his 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 um, vibrancy in his vocals um, really stuck out to me as. A, uh, looking back at these like older artists and saying, oh my god this guy have such life in not uh, like his spirit really came out vocally yeah, you can tell you can tell the love that he had for uh, for his music the for his folk 
type uh, music. He wasn't just, it. you could tell it wasn't uh, work for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, just was like breathing for him <laughs> almost. Just came out very naturally. So I've got a, I found a video that you had made uh, for Fool For You, uh, one of the songs on the album. Uh, why don't you uh, tell us about the video and uh, what you made and then we'll show a clip. Yeah, um, Fool For You, uh, it's one of the, the last tracks on the album. It's um, kind of a toe tapper. Um, and uh, while like slowly making the album, I have been making kind of these like very lo-fi um, music videos of my own as just a way to have some visual component to share along um, now that everything's just online. And um, I think kind of the, uh, as the album was coming to an end, um, I decided, you know, like we're all on Zoom now. Well, we're literally on Zoom right now. And um, I did, hey, right there. And um, I, don't, I, like, I haven't done a lot of Zoom myself um, cause a lot of my work has been in person, but, uh, the few times that I did it, you know, I, I was exploring and realized like you can change the background, uh, like to make it like a green screen. And I thought it would be really kind of funny to just use that feature, um, to make a video and to show kind of me, this guy just in all these different like pop culture places. And so I just started brainstorming, um, like locations that everyone might be able to recognize very quickly. And um, just every night I just kind of was filming different things in my bedroom. Uh, just me pretty much just dancing around endlessly for, for hours and then just kind of compiling it into uh, just hopefully what I, I think is like a, a very uplifting, happy, uh, positive uh, project that, that came up for, to represent the song. Well, uh, let's uh, let's give a watch. Here is uh, "Full for You," Michael Maloney. Yeah. That was pretty daring, putting yourself there instead of Freddie Mercury. <laughs> yes, I think that was a little bit of a, of a Wayne's World reference, but um, no, yeah, of course, his vocal was just amazing. Now, this, this definitely looked like forgotten. this was a lot of fun to make. Yeah, it was almost uh, therapeutic for me to, um, I just felt like the fall um, was very stressful. And uh, this was kind of a, a fun thing. I got to come home and just do on my own in the privacy of my room, and no one, no one <laughs> saw what I was doing. Kind of just to see it, like, uh, like I think my dresser was behind me, and sometimes the dresser would pop out uh, from the green screen effect not working. And uh, you might have heard like odd squeakies from the wooden floorboard. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I did a lot of it in like a week, and then I kind of let it sit for a few weeks and I thought of some other things. Um, you know, I, I think I explored some more Star Wars locations and like Blue's Clues. Um, I think I got the Tiger King in there and- Yeah, at the just, end, yeah, at the end I saw that. That was, that, that made me laugh. Yeah. Just all like, um, you know, very like 2020 in a video. <laughs> so I thought, thought it could be very timely. So if someone wanted to get this, here's a CD again. Yeah. Uh, where can they get this? 
Yeah. Um, so I actually need to probably really work on like a website, um, but someone at least digitally can get it on iTunes and Amazon. Uh, you can stream it on Spotify. Um, or if you go maybe onto my, my Facebook page, um, facebook.com Michael M Music, um, you could maybe send me a message um, or you could email me at uh, Michael Maloney. 1990 at gmail.com and I'm sure we could kind of coordinate uh, a drop off or I can mail it to you and we can do Venmo or something that all the cool kids are doing these days. Well, uh, what I'll do, I'll make sure that all of those, all that's uh, on the description. Great, perfect, thank you. So uh, to wrap things up, uh, do you have anything to say to all your new and future and current fans? The floor is yours. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, uh, again, uh, Jason, thank you for having me. And um, I know in the in the clinic we really didn't have much uh, time to really talk because we were, you know, I just was busy. Um, but I appreciated you taking an interest in my music and um, especially being a fellow kind of classic rock uh, lover. Um, so thank you for having me and everyone for watching. My pleasure. Um, and for everyone, um, actually, this was fun. Uh, I did a Kickstarter last summer, and it was predominantly um, supported from my friends and family. Um, and with everything going on this year, it was so powerful to know that um, everyone really wanted to support this project and this music of mine, uh, my own personal music. Um, so it's been really touching. So thank you also to everyone who helped make it, um, including my, my friend in my Irish band, Ryan Biggins. Uh, we worked for several months on just the artwork alone. And he really wanted to make sure that um, it physically represents kind of what the music is. And that also it really, um, you know, I'm really proud of how it came out. Um, he really fit in a lot in there. Um, and um, my, my other friend, Billy Leach, who helped mix and master the album, you know, the poor guy, he's, he was listening to this album thousands of times. Uh, you know, we were working on it for about a year and a half. Um, and, uh, and he, you know, he got like kind of, he got very emotional um, a few months ago. He kind of like, once it was done, he revisited it. Um, and really in the, in the middle of, 2020 he was listening to it and um I think he'd be comfortable with me sharing this that he got very emotional and uh just started crying um that for him he feels that the songs are about love and connections to other people and this last year has been really hard to do that and um and how sometimes connections can be a wonderful thing uh, but also can be a painful thing too um, uh, or if something has ended or, or something hasn't gone the way that you thought, uh, but how, how wonderful it is to be able to experience that. Um, and so he, he really thinks, um, it was really touching for him to say that. So, um, if, if people give this a listen, I'd be curious to, to hear your own thoughts, um, and how it kind of impacts you, uh, with the current circumstances. Um, and I hope that if anything, it leaves you, uh, with hope. Uh, and positivity and the joy of, of love and friendship and honesty and um, togetherness. So the, the album is just about the joys of being together. And, and I, I look forward to someday when we all can safely be together again. I couldn't put that any better myself. So for those of you who have... Uh... Thanks, <laughs> so uh, thank you everybody for uh, watching. Uh, all of the information, all the links and everything will be down in the description. And again, uh, Michael, thank you so much for uh, taking some time out. Uh, thank you for look, having me. Look this up. Once again, shameless plug. January Hopeful, Michael Maloney. This is good stuff. Check it out. <laughs> the wicked and, uh, good. <laughs> Gouda. <laughs> no, my God, see you para. I don't. <laughs> we'll see you on the next video. Bye.